Elliot, just to start things off, I think a question here is how expansively the judges could rule here and really what this could mean and also how soon we could know it seemed where they were leaning today, but how soon we could know what their decision is. I, you know, I think we could know relatively soon in legal terms. Now, again, that's not news cycle terms, so you know we may not hear tomorrow, but certainly within days, if not weeks. Something uh, that people should know is that these judges have been preparing for this argument for weeks, if, you know, perhaps even months. They would have had hundreds of pages of briefing from the attorneys, so they kind of might have had a sense going in as to wh where they were going to rule um, and are really just sort of refining and... and figuring out what their opinion is going to say. So I would be on the lookout for something within the coming days. Now, um, in terms of how expansive it could be, um, exactly as your lead into this segment noted, Caitlin, it was pretty clear, uh, listening to the argument, and having listened to a lot of these arguments over the years, it was pretty clear that the, you know Trump's team did not have the judges on their side. Uh, Judge Pan's question, particularly on that hypothetical, was just devastating um, because they did not have an answer to it. And there can it can cannot possibly be the case that attorneys, or, or pardon me, that a former president could engage in whatever conduct he, w he wished and resign the next day and avoid any possible criminal well, uh, yeah. exposure. So, and, yeah. and to that overall argument, George Conway, I mean, you've practiced law as a conservative attorney for decades. You've argued before the Supreme Court. You played a central role in one of the key cases that defined the limits to presidential immunity, we could be in for an entirely new definition maybe here. But I wonder what you made of this assertion by Trump's team that the only way to hold a president accountable for crimes was to first have them convicted in an impeachment proceeding by the Senate. Well, the, the short answer is what they were doing there was taking a bad argument, their immunity argument, and conflating it with another bad argument, which is something based upon the impeachment judgment clause, and mixing them all together in the hope of getting a stronger argument. And what happened was uh, the, the Trump attorney, Sauer, set a trap for himself that Judge Pan just completely, completely closed off. And she, she was, it was an intellectual tour de force by Judge Pan. Not only did she highlight the extreme nature of their position that a president might not be prosecutable for assassinating political rivals, she did something else. His exception, his attempt to explain, well, you could hold a president liable was based upon that impeachment judgment clause. He's, he's misreading it by saying that if you can prosecute a former president if they were convicted by the Senate. Well, the problem was that completely is inconsistent with their main position, which is the president is absolutely immune. And let me elaborate just a little more on that. Their position that the president is absolutely immune, immune from being prosecuted for official acts is stems from the notion that she repeated, Sauer repeated over and over again, that we must be, we have, we have to be afraid that there, there, there'll be political prosecutions. And then he's taking this other position, which again is nonsense by itself, but trying to mix it in by saying, but you could prosecute him if the Congress, which happens to be the most political body in, in, the, United, in, in, the, in the Capitol, um, says you can. So what he's saying on one hand is saying, we can't have pro presidents prosecuted because, of po because it, it could be political. And then he's saying that the, the political Congress gets to decide. It made absolutely no sense. And I was there in the courtroom and and it was just, it was devastating. You were in the courtroom today as these arguments were being made, George? Yeah, I was sitting way in the back. And, um, but I, I could hear it, I could hear it pretty well, except for maybe Judge Henderson, whose voice was a little soft. But I mean, it was absolutely, it was one of those moments, and I'm writing a piece in The Atlantic tonight that should come out tomorrow, where you know, before the, I mean, it was like 10 minutes into the argument when, 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 when Judge Plan just completely demolished uh, Trump's lawyer, and you knew right then you didn't have to hear anything else. I mean, the <laughs> the lawyer for the special counsel's office could have just stood up there and talked for five minutes and nonsense and sat down, and he still would have known that he won. I mean, the the rest of the rest of the uh, event was kind of anticlimactic after those exchanges well, that you just played. The other argument was essentially what Judge Pan also brought up was, I believe it was Judge Pan that the question of how this goes with what we had heard from Trump's attorneys, a different group of attorneys, albeit in his impeachment, actual, the actual impeachment that did happen on Capitol Hill. I, I know that was a long time ago, so I just want to remind people what it was that Trump's attorneys said then. There is no such thing as a January exception to impeachment. 
There is only the text of the Constitution which makes very clear that a former president is subject to criminal sanction after his presidency for any illegal acts he commits. George, what did you make of that being brought up by the appeals court judges today? It, it, it was terrific. I mean, it, it's always great when you can catch your adversary taking one position before one court and then taking another before some other tribunal. Here was the Senate and then this, this federal court. And it just shows the fundamental, I mean, they're, they're just playing hide, hide, the, they're playing hide the, uh, the, the ball there. You know, they, they, they persuaded the Senate to uh, not convict him on the grounds that you couldn't convict a former president. And then, and, but they said, hey, you know, you can, you can prosecute him criminally. And in fact, on February 13, 2021, a majority leader, uh, uh, McConnell, said, you know, there's a criminal law in this country. He made clear that, that criminal, criminal prosecution was an option. And then when the criminal prosecution comes around, they say, oh, never mind that. Uh, we, he was acquitted. And the fact of the matter is, a, a large number of the senators who voted not to convict Donald Trump in, in 2021 did so because for, for, for purely technical reason that he's not present anymore. And when we, they believed, I think incorrectly, but they believed that they didn't have the power to bar him from holding future office because he was no longer in office. Yeah, that was a point that, that they made. And John Dean, you know, looking at this, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of historical context that was brought up today, including your former boss, Richard Nixon. Obviously, you were the former White House counsel, so I wonder what you made of listening, given you know Nixon's conduct as well as anyone and what was actually happening inside that administration at that time. There was this argument that that was, you know, that this was purely private conduct. That was the, by Nixon, that that was the argument that Trump's attorney was making today is why that's not relevant to this case. Caitlin, actually, they were raising a case that happened after Nixon had left office when Fitzgerald sued uh, Nixon for firing him and a couple of cabinet officers and other people uh, trying to make a civil case out of it. And Nixon invoked the, uh, the privilege, if you will, at that point that he was immune and the Justice Department defended him. And they succeeded. And we have the case of, of uh, Nixon versus Fitzgerald, which is now... Uh, been being relied on by Trump, saying that he was doing nothing more than Nixon was. Very different situation. That was a pure civil situation. This is a pure criminal situation. And on your earlier point about the impeachment thing, I think is wonderful, uh, because uh, the follow-up question the judge asked after referring to that earlier impeachment concession uh, was of today's lawyer, and today's lawyer says, oh, well, it, was race, it wasn't race judicata, meaning it wasn't, uh, it's not inapplicable today in the words of the Latin law, uh, and he said so because it was a different proceeding. Well, they're relying on this proceeding as being something that bars future prosecution because he's already been tried. They're trying to claim this is double jeopardy. So they're all over the lot. Caitlin, all over the lot. So I take it you weren't impressed with the way Trump's attorney argued in court today? Underwhelmed. I, I felt sorry for him, actually. Do you think that it means that they're going to rule against him? I, I'm convinced they will. I, it, would be, it would be so stunning for Trump to succeed in this argument. I think it's a make-weight argument where they're just trying to get delay, delay, delay. They're going to go for the full en banc hearing of the entire D.C. Court of Appeals. Then they'll lose there. Then they'll go up to the Supreme Court and they'll argue there. And pretty soon, months will have passed and he hopes he's president and can somehow magically erase it all. Yeah, they're aiming for, for a delay here. And Elliot, you know, you have worked across all three branches of government. You've been worked as a counsel in the Senate, multiple roles in the executive branch. When you look at this, you know, was there ever this understanding uh, when you were there that to be, to, to have a president be, or to have someone being removed from office, that that would be necessary before that figure, that president could be criminally charged? 
I am so glad you're asking me that, Caitlin, because, you know, a, a big point underlying today's hearing was a gross misunderstanding of the impeachment provisions in the Constitution. And George touched on this a little bit earlier on. The point of impeachment uh, is to ensure integrity of government and not punish people criminally. If one is impeached, they lose their job. That is the point of impeachment to ensure that our government functions effectively. The point of our criminal justice system serves an entirely different purpose in the country. It's, you know, the punishing people, deterring offenders and so on. Trying to graft one on top of the other, as Trump's attorneys did today, misconstrues uh, and, and frankly, uh, confuses the public about what the point of impeachment is. That you have nothing to do with each other. It's a different type of proceeding. And the idea and again, touched on by Judge Pan, the idea that a president could engage in whatever, quote unquote, official misconduct he wanted uh, and get away with it simply by virtue of not being impeached is just simply incorrect. And, and the judges tip, you know, you never know what judges are going to do, but they, they did tip their hands today that, that this is one that I think they will be pretty clear and unequivocal on. Yeah, it'll be so fascinating to read the, their opinions yeah. and their rulings once that does come down.